Hi everyone, welcome to the Dolphina Show. My name is Sophie and I am the maker behind the Dolphina bags and I'm also the owner of Dolphina Collective. I'm super happy to have you with me today. I have a few things to talk to you about before we get into the interview. The first thing, I just launched two weeks ago, DolphinaCollective.com. So if you want to head over, I have a bunch of new stuff. There's also a big event coming up uh, from April 7th to 10th. It's the Knit and Escape virtual retreat under the theme, Happy on Birthday, hosted by Chrissy Glass. So I'll be vending, teaching, and I am also a cashmere uh, sponsor. So for the weekend, pretty much my schedule is I'm going to have a vending time slot on Thursday, April 8th from 8 to 9. I will also want, have one on Saturday, April the 10th from 2 to 3 p.m. So I'm also teaching a bag making class, which will actually take place on Saturday, April the 10th from 4.30 to 6.30. And I'm also hosting a super fun event on Thursday between 11 and 11.30 called the Battle of the Yarn Husband. So you should stay tuned to find out who my guests are going to be. So that's going to be super fun. So you can actually add in the description below to find a link to the event. So today, my guest is actually from Texas. I've never had the chance to meet her in person, but she is super sweet. Um, and I'm super excited to, in to introduce to you Diane Brown from the Suburban Stitcher. Stay tuned. struggle too much with my French accent but I think we're gonna have fun I have like a nice set of 75 questions for you I'm a little nervous and... <laughs> you ready I'm ready when you are awesome Diane suburban D stitcher welcome to the Dolphina show so let's jump right into it first question how are you feeling right now? Tired. <laughs> I'm just finished watching the news. Yeah. Which is an up and down thing these days. Um, so there's that. But um, but overall good, right? Like that's a lot of answer for just a, a one easy question. What's exciting in your life right now? exciting um I took a day off today that's exciting <laughs> that's awesome um it's sunny outside that's really exciting and happy and what's missing in, in your life at the moment what's missing um more days off <laughs> <laughs> um more nachos I don't know no, there's never enough nachos how do you start your morning okay so um most mornings especially during the week I get up pretty early like five ish um I get up and get dressed I have to set my clothes out the night before and then I exercise early because if I wait until after I'm fully awake to exercise then it won't happen because I can talk myself out of it but if I do it before I'm really aware that I've made that decision, <laughs> then it happens. Um, so I just, I get up, I exercise probably four to five days a week. It's four o'clock your time. It's five o'clock my time. Yeah. So I'm guessing after we finish this, you're going to go ahead and get supper ready. 
Yep. So what are you having for supper tonight? What are we having for supper? We're having leftovers. We had some teriyaki chicken with coconut rice and we had some broccoli last night, but that's all gone because broccoli is not a thing that you keep, right? Like I try to eat all the broccoli when I cook it. <laughs> so Fair we enough. are, I'll have new vegetables of some sort. So it's leftovers. Sounds good. What's your favorite sport? Texas girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's kind of twofold. Um, I have to say baseball because that's what my kids play. And I love, right. I love watching baseball. Um, I, I have two boys, so they're, mm -hmm. that's important, but I really, really love football. So I love watching football. It's funny. Cause I just finished, um, green light by Matthew McConaughey and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, lo I love Texas football. People. <laughs> I know it's crazy. It's totally, it's totally a thing. And I didn't grow up in Texas. And so I'm sort of, I've lived here for most of my life now, but I didn't have, you Where know, were you born? Up here. Louisiana. What's your favorite board game? Oh, um, is it sorry? The one that you hit the bubble in the middle. In the middle? Yep. Okay. That's There's a good news or bad news. Who's the first person you call? Good news or bad news? Oh, my husband. What's the best book you've read, you've read recently? I, I can't remember the name of it, but I just finished, um, John Grisham. He, you know, he did the time to kill with Matthew McConaughey. That was the movie many years ago. Many so years ago. I found out recently that that was a trilogy and that he, the time to kill was the first one and that he wrote two more. And so I just read the second and the third one and they were really great. So awesome. What song can you not stop singing? Um, it kind of varies. It's probably either a TikTok song that I hear my kids on, you know, walking around the house with, right. which those change like every four and a half minutes, I feel like. Um, <laughs> pro that's probably would be my answer because that's the little earworm that would get stuck in my head. All right. What's the best movie to watch with your kids? With my kids. Okay, so... <laughs> We just recently watched with them the Back to the Future oh. series. They hadn't seen those, and that was super fun. Did they, they like they that? It. Oh, yeah, for sure. Where do you go to get inspired? I feel like the romantic answer to that is a place, but like, <laughs> like people would be like, I'm inspired by nature, whatever. But honestly, um, Usually my inspiration for like for work or whatever is um, like music. Yeah. I get inspired by music and it's, it's not even like a direct thing. Like it'll just be like almost like a mood. Like I'm listening to music and then there's a, like the mood of the music. And then I, you know, will something will happen from there. Um, That's awesome. If I try to get inspired like on purpose, then it never works out. Manicure or pedicure? Uh, both. Me too. Okay. The best reaction you've ever had? Best reaction I've ever had. I'm trying to think what that would be about. Um, Anything. First thing that comes to mind. I gave my friend a gift that I felt really confident that she would like. And it was like one of those, oh my gosh, I love this. And so that's always good. What color do you gravitate? the most around pink 100 percent pink so you're married i am how long have you been married for um well our anniversary is actually sunday it'll be 17 years on sunday okay so usually well no not usually i always do a little bit of research before i actually interview somebody i've never met before and then I've been scrolling through your Instagram to try to figure out what your husband's name is. And I couldn't <laughs> find anything. So I don't know. His name so is what? Josh. So Mr. Stitcher is Josh. I like that. Yes. All right. Yeah. How did you, Josh and you meet? Um, we met in college. Um, he, we went, we did not go to the same school, but 
I moved to Texas and he grew up in the town where the university is that I went yep. and we were introduced by um, mutual friends. My like dorm mates were, uh, went to high school with him. And so they invited me to one of their parties and we met there. And you like to first. I definitely made the first move. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> I thought, um, right? I mean, you got to go after what you want. That's um, it. Yeah, I definitely, I, yeah, I made the first move for sure. What was your first date? Um, our first official date was a movie. When did you know you wanted to marry him? Um, about six weeks after we started dating. I can remember going home to um, visit my parents back in Louisiana and I, I, I mean, I remember this very distinctly. My, I was at my dad's office. I had picked him up and we were going to lunch. And I said, dad, I met this guy. And if someone said that that was the person that I'm marrying and that I have to spend the rest of my life with, like, that would be really, that would be okay. That's and amazing. that was when I knew like, that's it. <laughs> that's amazing. I love it. So I actually noticed that you guys have date nights right we try to yeah so what's the best way to spend time together what's your best date night right well gosh that's really changed in the last year right like everything else <laughs> right um now I feel like our best date nights are when we leave the kids at home while we go pick up takeout <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yes, I get to spend alone time with you in the car. Um, we like you know doing what? things. I can relate because since the beginning of the pandemic, that's been something we've done a lot. Just grab the dog, get in the car and just go on a road trip nowhere around here. Like, you Yes, know? you have to because you're, I think we're in our space so much. We're in our house and, you know, I'm in here or in the garage and he's where he is and the kids are everywhere. And so sometimes you just have to like put yourself in a different place so that you can have a conversation or whatever. It's so important. I love it. What would Josh say your best quality is? Ta -ta -ta. Probably my butt. I don't <laughs> <laughs> no, he would say I, that was really crass. Um, he would That's say amazing. that I am, um, <laughs> that I'm real, like, that I am like, that I know what I want and that I'm independent and like, that I go for what I want. That's probably what he would say my best quality is. What was the most surprising thing about becoming a mother? Oh, um, you know, I go from like, are you more manicure or pedicure to the existential right? Question, yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> Big thinking questions. Um, Not necessarily the hardest thing, but what was the most surprising part of becoming a mother? So Something for me, it was you that you never expected. Yeah, so I, um, I think I expected that like instant connection, like that they hand you this baby and that you're like, oh my whole world and I did not have that experience <laughs> at all um and so it took me a while to feel like okay this is a thing that that I am doing now like it was a hard now I would probably look at that and go oh yeah there was definitely some like postpartum depression or something right but um that was the surprise like I expected it to be like this easy okay instant connection and it was right yeah and so that was surprising for me but um but you know obviously we're all fine now so <laughs> <laughs> we're all still here <laughs> what do your kids do to make you laugh oh gosh um <laughs> when I'm not screaming or crying um they they're really funny they um like my youngest has the biggest personality and he loves to dance and loves to sing. And I mean, like we'll do things when you, he knows that you're looking at him and we'll like purposely, you know, ham it up. And um, so that's really fun. 
my oldest, he is a little bit more serious, but you know, they just, they're kind of goofy kids and they're not too, um, I don't know. I don't like shy. That's not the right word. Reserved. Maybe. Yeah, they're not, they're not super reserved. They're pretty fun and they, they like to have fun. So skydiving or scuba diving? Ooh, scuba. Early bird or night owl? Early bird, 100%. What's your secret talent? Um, I used to sing. That's not really secret, but it's <laughs> most people that are knitters don't know that. <laughs> like that's a different world I feel like that was a different life but yeah hills or flats um flats <laughs> diamonds or pearls <laughs> pearls if you if you were ruling the world what would be the first law you would enact that everyone needs to learn to knit I like it <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of zen that needs to happen that people need to learn, learn that. <laughs> I like it. Diane, aside from your wallet and your cell phone, name me five thing I would find in your purse right now. Gum. Yep. Lipstick. Yep. Lip liner. Yep. Chapstick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Old receipts. Perfect. What's your favorite lipstick shade and brand, if you remember, or brand and shade name, if you remember? <laughs> I 100% know, and it's Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. Ah, I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my favorite. I love it. I like it. What's your favorite vacation spot when you can travel? When I can travel, um, someplace with a lake I like a lake and not an ocean I think um oh yeah okay. so okay. um and that could be a pond right like just something with water like it doesn't have to be big you know the great lakes it's just something with water beaches I like it and I like the noise but it's really I don't like the salt oh okay and I also am nervous about drowning but lakes are like, you can look at it and it calms your, you know, anxiety down, but it feels less scary than the ocean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm surprised you said scuba diving instead of skydiving then. Well, but my fear is falling. If I have to choose from my fears, falling is worse than drowning. So oh. scuba. Okay. Fair enough. There's All oxygen. Right with scuba diving so it's okay okay I won't <laughs> tell you I am a scuba diver I won't tell you stories because you would never, you would never oh I'm never diving. going to do it it's fine I can enjoy the tv just fine and appreciate from afar from all the people that do it successfully I love it all right this is a cool one well I, I like that what piece of clothing Josh hates in your closet Oh, I have this dress. I, I know this one easily. I have this dress. It's a sundress that's about a size and a half too big. And he says it looks like a moo, moo, but it is the most comfortable thing in the entire world. And the cotton is super, it's like thin. And so not like, it, not gross thin, but just a thinner cotton. And so it's really yeah. cool and it's very hot here. And so it's so comfortable to wear, but he says it looks so horrible. And he's like, please stop wearing that. So, but I don't get rid of it. I love it. I just wear it when he's not here. Okay. So what piece of clothing you ate in Josh's closet? <laughs> he has lots of gross, like basketball shorts, but okay. like just workout shorts that are too old, yeah. but he can't get rid of them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. If you could teach a subject in school, what would you teach? Science. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tea or coffee? Um, depends on the time of day. Coffee in the morning, tea afternoon. What's your favorite cocktail? 
cocktail. Um, well, if I'm just ordering sight unseen and I don't know like a house special or something, it's a gin and tonic. That's like my go-to. You're my girl. <laughs> yeah, gin and tonic is my like favorite, just standard whatever. But I do love trying like a good, this is what our bartender likes to make, or this is our seasonal special, then great. But if you go somewhere, you want your true value, you'll go for a gin and tonic. I totally agree. That's right. I love it. This is a deep one. What's your definition of misery? Misery? Mine is easy, running out of a yarn, but anyway. Well, right. I know, man, that's less deep than I was thinking. So I'm like, <laughs> like extreme pain that doesn't go away that would be miserable I feel like that would be really that would be bad right if you could have a date with anybody dead or, or alive who would that be Sean Connery good choice what's your spirit animal um ooh, that's a hard one I feel like <laughs> so you want to know the first thing that came to mind oh please tell me <laughs> Miss Piggy from um, the Muppet Show. The Muppet. From the Muppets. Yep. Which isn't really a real animal. It's just more the fact that she is a princess. <laughs> That's, I feel like that is, like, she's just ridiculously and unabashedly a princess. And that's kind of how I feel in my house full of boys. I'm like, I'm that that's just, amazing. I like pink and I like pretty things, and that's who I am. So where are you in Texas exactly? So I live you, outside of- Don't forget, Kingston. I'm originally from Montreal. I live in Kingston, Ontario, which is between Montreal and Toronto. Right. So to situate people, you know, Texas is a big state, so- It is. So I am outside of Houston okay. and I'm south of Houston. So I actually um, am about 40 miles as the crow flies from the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. So we're very tropical. Nice. Yeah. So how far are you from Houston? 45 minutes. Do you go often or you try not, not really. to? No, we, I think it's kind of like the best of both worlds because we're really pretty suburbia slash rural where I live. And so I have, you know, I can get to Target in 10 minutes and I can get into Houston for, you know, any major sports or theater or big fancy shopping or whatever I need to do, you know, in 45 minutes, but I don't have to do any of those and I can stay very close, which is great. So if you had to describe Houston in three words. Um, big. Yep. Diverse. Busy. Name me one thing someone should do in Houston. Go see a major league, like a major sports. We have all of the major, like top, except for hockey. That's the only thing we don't have. Men's and women's pretty much. We have like every major sport. So I love it. Yep. And tell me one word you use, you use too much. Um. <laughs> like. <Okay. laughs> <laughs> all the verbal crutches <laughs> yeah yeah the the silent fillers I call them <laughs> yes yes <laughs> what would be the title of your biography oh that's a hard one she lived well <laughs> I like it I feel like and then people can read into that however they want whether it was selfishly or generously hopefully a little bit of both that's my goal I was gonna say maybe both what's your biggest goal for 2021 you know what I, I'm sitting this and I'm reading the question and I'm thinking you know what what's your biggest dream for 2021 oh man that is yeah that's kind of both both of those are good so my personal goal for 2021, I would say is I would like to get back into establishing routines because I feel like 2020 stripped everything that was a normal routine away from us. <laughs> and I would like to claim some of that back in 2021. And in 
this year, my biggest dream is that by the end of the year that I'll be able to take a vacation with my family again. I don't care where, I just want to go. I want it to be safe enough to be able to go on vacation again. If you could give your 13 year old self advice, what would it be? Um, that no one is thinking about you as much as you think they are. That is very wise. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the last person you texted? My best friend. It's the last podcast or YouTube channel you watched? Yours. Really? I did. Which episode? Yes. Which episode? Um, gang cocaine. Because <laughs> I love Gina. <laughs> you picked a good one. Yeah, um, she's funny. She's amazing. What's your worst habit? Nachos. <laughs> What's the stupidest thing you've ever done? Go to Mexico in college with just girls, like young, you know, 19, 20, and go party in Mexico. That was stupid. Like when no one knew we were going. <laughs> it was not very, it was not a wise decision. Who do you look up to most in life? Mm, my dad. It's the last show you've been watched. Well, I haven't finished it yet. I only, I still have like a season and a half, but I'm in the middle of 24, which is okay. kind of an old one, but I never watched it then. Oh, so yeah. I'm going back now. Um, and then before that, I wa I can't remember what it's called. It's new-ish, I think on Netflix. And it was about like a ballet academy and there was all this drama. So I think it's- I'm really not up to date like, with- tiny things or something like that I don't know but it was it was pretty good what's the first thing you notice about a person their eyes what's your guilty pleasure candy what's your favorite candy anything that's not chocolate I'm not a big fan really? of chocolate oh. yeah I really love like <laughs> chewy candies <laughs> like um like gummy bear yes like gummy bears or um like sour patch kids the yeah, 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 super yeah. chewy I okay. love that stuff which is horrible but what's the latest pretty penny you spend I bought myself a new two new fountain pens right after Christmas with some Christmas money so that was that was nice <laughs> Oh, yeah. What's the craziest thing you've ever done for someone? For someone else? I bought my husband a new wedding band for our 10th anniversary and spent money that I knew that he would be mad that I was spending, but I did it anyway to surprise <laughs> him. So that's probably the craziest. Sweet or salty? Salty. Was the best sound in the world? Um, babies laughing. Would you rather go camping in the woods or stay at a beach resort? Beach resort, 100%. Where's your happy place? Someplace like vacationing with my family, like wherever that is. It could be anywhere, but just where we all get to take time off and get away somewhere. So it could be, you know, at the gas station around the corner if it was all of us with like no phones and no responsibilities and just being yeah burgers or tacos oh ha that's not fair burgers that's yeah burgers. <laughs> that's my final answer how'd you calm yourself when you're angry gin and tonics <laughs> um knitting any of those. <laughs> like it. Tell me something beautiful you see every day. Nature, like the outside. Yeah. How do you define success? Gosh, that's, I feel like for me, success would be feeling like confident with where I am and what I'm doing, right? Like if I, and I don't think I'm there yet, but that would be, that would define success for me. Like if I ever get to where I'm just 
feel like everything, you know, like you're happy all like that there's nothing that you would change that would be. Do you think success. there's a difference between success and perfection? I think there is because I think you can be, anybody can be successful, right? If you decide that that's success for you, I feel like that's more relative. For me, there's definitely a difference in success over perfection. Cause there's a lot of things that like are perfect, but may not be successful. I like that. Yeah. Diane, let's dive into the woolly questions, shall we? <laughs> yes. Woo! I'm Yay! Sweating a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Come on. You did yes, good. This is the good stuff. <laughs> All right. So who or how did you learn to knit? How did I learn to knit? Um, I learned kind of like half by um, a coworker of mine at a job about 10 to 12 years ago. Um, and, and then also filled in what she knew with um, YouTube. So kind of half taught, half self-taught. So there's no stories about your mother or your grandmother teaching you or? Nope. I, um, I learned to sew from my mother and, um, and there are people that do all sorts of crafty things in my family, but no one that was alive that did any needle, you know, with yarn, knitting or crochet. So that was just. I knew quilters like on social media that I followed would, I'd see them, you know, knit something. And I was like, I want to learn that. So that's how I got into it. Nice. And where's the dyeing coming from? How did Suburban Stitcher actually was born? So um, I, Suburban Stitcher, a long time ago was born like the name was a blog that I started about 15 years ago right after my son was born and it was just my way to like hold on to me even though I was this person that was supposed to like being a mom <laughs> like remember when I said that was hard right at first so that's what that's how suburban sister kind of started and um and I cross stitched and then I quilted and then I found uh, knitting and and then knitting was the thing that stuck because because it was portable and I you know you can't as you know you cannot bring a sewing machine <laughs> everywhere and do that all of the time so um, yeah so that's that's how the name started and then the yarn dyeing started when I um, I had I had quit my job and I also made project bags to begin with for a business and my husband, I had talked to him about yarn dyeing and I said, well, I don't really want to spend the money, you know, like trying it because there's was just more investment up front to even try it. And I came home one day and he was watching Nicole of Hugh Loco on YouTube, watching her tutorials. And he said, we're doing this. And that's, I just said okay let's do it and he said what you know a couple hundred bucks here you go it doesn't matter we're just going to try it and then then the rest is history really <laughs> that's, that's so does he does he die with you all the time he's never died with me no but really? he said but we do everything like every decision we make is a team decision and so um I never wanted to try it because I was, I knew like, well, what if I hate it? And I've spent, you know, all this money trying it and I hate it. Or what if I like it, but I'm horrible and nothing sells or what it, all of the fears. And he was like, nope, we're going to try it and you're going to be great and it's going to be fine. And so I think once I had the permission, like it wasn't going to ruin our lives if we spent the money and it failed, then it was okay. And then I could try it. So I love it. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah. 
So another existential question about fibers or knitting, mm -hmm. but what does this community means to you? Oh gosh. I mean, I feel like the, I wouldn't still be doing this if it weren't for community. Um, I started knitting, you know, just as a thing that I did on my lunch break um, at my, a job that I hated. And so it was the thing that like every day I knew if I can just get to lunch in it, and then, <laughs> right. You know, it's like the thing that gets you through the hard times, whether it be a job or whatever. Um, and then when I started, um, meeting more people online, you know, I met so many friends that I knew virtually, you know, you meet them at Rhinebeck and you meet them at festivals and you, you end up traveling together and rooming together. And it was, this whole world of people that, you know, maybe we're all sort of misfits or whatever in our own realities, but then we all have this thing in common and that none of this other stuff matters because we have yarn and fiber that we can share and relate with. And that's, um, yeah, that, it was really important to me. Like I said, I feel like I have always felt very strongly about, you know, when you're a mom or a wife or whatever, like that I felt very strongly about still having a thing that was Diane, like through all of this, like, yes, I'm the parent or the wife, but I'm Diane still at the end of the day, because eventually my kids are going to move out and I'm still going to have to know who I am. And, um, that's, yeah, so the it's community because, is amazing. It's funny because I had a conversation with my my longest friend today, and she's like, she's she's gonna turn forty eight tomorrow, and she's like, I feel like at this point, especially with the pandemic, it kind of like weed out like the the phony people and the bad people. And then you realize who is still there. Yes. And when you get to like, I'm 45. And she, like I said, she's going to turn 48 tomorrow. It's harder to make friends the older you get, unless you have a hobby where yes. you can all connect together. That's right. right? Yeah, so, yeah, I totally agree. It's that's the good thing about this year is like, we've all been forced to, like weed out the things that don't serve us, whether it's habits, whether it's jobs, whether it's people, whether it's anything, right? Hobbies, whatever, and and focus in on what works and what's good and what is um, important. And yeah, I mean, you it you when you have to reset your priorities, it just makes a world of difference. What's your best fiber festival memory? It's so like many. I'm asking you to pick your favorite child. <laughs> right? It is. It's a little hard. Um, probably the the one best. Dang it. That's really hard. I have two tops, but my favorite one is probably my first ever fiber festival, which was Rhinebeck of all things. That's kind of amazing. Um, wow. And I, it was the one where there were a handful, I think maybe four or five of us that had been friends online and we were all flying across the country to meet at Rhinebeck, many of us for the first time. And, and it's just something, it's like your first experience with anything, right? I feel like we all chase that experience, the feeling of that first time, <laughs> whatever it is. And yeah, it was just so I remember that because it was all of us getting together and that excitement of seeing the person that you have talked to for over a year or however long. And it's like, you've been friends forever. Like even you hug and you are just like, oh yeah. And you carry on like it's a normal thing. And that's amazing. And it's sometimes from completely different sphere of life. And then this thing, this ball of yarn is actually uh -huh. with the center. That's right. Like the nucleus of the whole, of the whole thing. Well, yeah, because how many, how many of us are the same in our real worlds? Not very many, 
Yeah. So it's it's truly amazing. <laughs> Diane, show me your whips. Show me your whips. Okay, so I guess I can show this. This is a test knit that's like maybe secret. I don't know. Oh, well. Secret-ish. Um, oh, dang it. Look at this. It's all tangled. So I am knitting a shawl. Yeah. That's a test knit for Andrea Mowry. Ooh, oh. Oh, I'm going to turn on my like bright lights. Oh, that's better. Okay. Oh. So it's a big like triangular shawl. I'm just starting it. But these two blue yarns are mine. This is like yeah. a, kind of a navy ish, dark navy. And then this is kind of a teal. Yeah. And then this lighter one is a spin cycle that's sort of going to run through there. So, is it me? I but that looks sure this like the top. something like a little bit like the night shift, kind of from yeah, far. Kind of, yeah. It's so it, it's slip stitches, so it has that same idea. I do. But it's, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a mix of night shift meets stripes. I like it. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So. Anything else? Not really, because I don't have a ton of time to knit. So that's the thing I'm really focusing on right now because it's due at the end of the month. So I'm trying to be diligent. <laughs> what is your dream fiber destination? Shetland. Have you been to UIM before? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, I was supposed to go to Shetland this year or 2020. It was a big trip with knitting friends and like truly the trip of a lifetime. And um, obviously that did not happen. <laughs> um, it's tentatively still on the calendar for this year, but I don't know. I don't, so that would I, be what, end of September? Um, well, no, but not for Shetland Wool Week. It would just, okay. it's just a a trip with friends for a week and just doing just go whatever and... there is to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's one of those um, trips with um, Mary Jane Mucklestone and um, why am I losing the other name? Anyone watching is screaming at me right now. Um, her partner and they host these like Shetland week experiences I know you're so, talking about and I'm drawing a blank too, but I, yeah. okay. yeah. <laughs> I, I met them in January and then was going to see them again. Yeah. Anyway, so it was going to be one of those. So it's, a, it's like a tour. It's an official thing, but um, yeah, it'll happen one day. Shetland isn't going away, so it'll be there. What would be, who would be your dream collaboration with? If it hasn't already happened. I was going to say, I've had some really amazing, I have worked with, um, when I was first starting, I, I did collaborations with um, Mustache Yarn and, you know, some of my really great friends that kind of built me up and helped me get going. I've done collaborations with um, Hohi Locatelli and Vera Velamaki and um, I mean, just like the, the pinnacle people right in our community um I don't know I think something with Stephen West would be like insanely fun I I I just love working with anyone with people because everyone is so unique everyone has something different to bring to the table so I like working with anyone it's it's super it. fun I love it so much all right I would like you to shout out one small business in this industry that you love. One small business in this industry that I love. Like maybe somebody that's smaller than you. Let's yeah, say. Yeah, that's that is um I am pretty small. Um so I have a local friend who has just started dyeing yarn and she's crazy talented like she's one of those people that you look at like her first skeins and you're like how is that even fair like I just need to hang it up right now 
because she's doing this with, you know, four skeins under her belt. Um, she's incredible. Um, her name, her business is called Heather, Heathered Handmade. Yeah, Heathered Handmade. And she dyes yarn. Yep. And it's super, um, just really, really beautiful tonals and speckles, but not like super intense, like very um, subtle. She does a lot of like blues and purples and teals and then neutrals. And so that's yep. really pretty. Um, Don't um, worry. I'll look it up or I'll get in touch with you and I'll put like all the details in the description yeah. below. Yep. She but is I Heathered put... Handmaids. Heatheredhandmaids.com and she's Heathered Handmaids on Instagram. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. This is you and my questions for Deanne. I like I that. I love that. I love that. That's perfect because there's always somebody that we can, you know. I'm so about sharing and lifting up other smaller business yes. because we all started somewhere and I think we all need a little bit of push. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there a fiber or textile skill missing in your, in the Diane toolbox? Um, I would love to learn to weave. Um, I feel like twofold one because of my climate I feel like I could weave um, cotton and linen and things like that and it would be easier on my hands than knitting or crocheting with it um, yeah. I think I mean in theory that feels like it would be um, I can spin but I haven't spun in a couple of years my wheel is in a bag in the closet so <laughs> Um, weaving, I think would be really fun. I would love to learn someday. I like that. Yeah. Second, last question. What's the project you're the proudest of? So, um, ironically, it's also an Andrew and Mary shawl. <laughs> um, so I started, or I finished, it's done, but I, um, knit the find your fade. And I feel I'm proud of this because I used all stash and I am a serial stasher like many knitters. Um, and so I used all stash and it was, um, you know, all the seven colors or whatever. And it forced me to think about color in a brand new way. Like when she came out with this, I feel like that was when everybody started thinking fades when we really didn't think fades before that or at least I didn't yeah and it made those single skeins in my stash come alive to me in a totally unique way that I had never thought about them before and it was also right when I started dyeing yarn and I think because of that it modeled a lot of how I think about the yarn that I dye because I always think about it like okay if I was fading this where would I go next or what would I put with this or you know I have all of these questions that I want it to fit when I'm making it so um yeah I think I love the project and I love the colors but I think it's like the time and the experience of what it taught me is why it feels like the thing I'm most proud of. I think fades is a great way to tell a story, especially for that reason, yeah. especially when you're stash dive to make a fade. Yes. Then you put together skeins that you bought and it reminds you, oh, I bought this there. Oh, I was with so-and-so. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, even if the, the, like it's not as, I don't want to say it's not as popular. It's still popular, but but it's still there. There is kind of a, there's something about trades. I'm still really there into it. Is. <laughs> it. I love it. I mean, I, it is, there's something about it because of how captivating it is to watch colors move and to watch um, 
you know, whether it's, you know, all pinks that are going like a gradient light to dark, or whether it's something that goes, you know, through the rainbow and you get to watch it that way. I just think it's really unique. Sorry if you can hear that noise. <laughs> My neighbors across the street have race cars that they work on in their driveway and they just revved one of them up and it's like, of course, right, right now. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> a Wednesday afternoon at five to five. Right. And last question is not really a question. Uh -huh. I roll out the red carpet for you, my dear. What's coming for Suburban Stitcher in the next days, weeks, months, year? What's going on? What's coming? Um, I... Plug yourself. That's, I should say right. that that way. Plug yourself. Right? Plug myself. <laughs> um, so 2021 for me is the year where I am sort of getting back to my shop, <laughs> which sounds weird. But I spent a lot of years, the last two or three years, either traveling for shows all the time. And so my focus was shows or um, wholesale or trunk shows or things like that. And so 2021 is the year where I get back to this, where this is the priority. So um, I'm excited about that because I... Um, I like making people happy and that they can just go to the shop and get yarn when they want it. And that's my plan for this year. So. Oh, well, me for sure. Like, yes. I don't know. My hope is I get vaccinated, the borders get reopened and start the car. Right. <laughs> We're getting out of here. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I don't know if you know, but my best friend lives in Iowa. And back in June, I was supposed to drive there and, and spend my 45th birthday with her. And yeah, thank you so much. This was so much fun. I'm so happy we met. And like I said, I wish we met in person, but I really appreciate your time. I thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.